Welcome to Face to Face, I'm Amy Henderson and tonight we'll be talking and trying to find a little bit more about Adam Richard. Hello Adam. Hi Amy, how are you? How are you feeling this evening? Oh, I'm alright, I've got a bit of hay fever. I know, it's we're spring. both a bit, oh, so if we sneeze all over each other, yes. that's okay. My eyes leak. <laughs> <laughs> Your eyes leak. Now we want to find out a little bit more about you. Mm. Were you are you Melbourne born and bred? Yes I am, I grew up in uh, Brunswick. 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 Before it was, you know, the expensive place it is now. <laughs> it was, Before know. it was trendy. Yes, it was, you know, a bit of a poverty area back when I was. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So were you an only child, or no, did no, you no, have I have a, a sister. Just one? Yes, just one little sister, and she's, uh, she's so cute. <laughs> She's 29, but she's so cute. <laughs> yeah, even my, even my little brother, who's now like you know towers over me, still my little brother. But um, so what were you what were you like at home and at school? Were you always like the class clown? Is that where the comedian thing came from? Um, not to high school really. When I was like in primary school, I was very diligent, very good, you know, I oh. student, the whole thing. And um, then I got to I don't know, I got to about 15 years old and um, became insane. Yeah, yes. it was a bit of a rebellion. It was, that. yes. I, and I became the campus child at school. That <laughs> ever I mean, I was always, you know, I was always a puffy kid. Like when, yeah. you know, when, when you're little and you try and jump off the roof. Did, did you do that? Did you jump off the roof? Of did course you? I did. Because <laughs> <laughs> like, my friend David did it like with a towel around his neck, thinking he was Superman. And my friend Craig climbed up the spouting, thinking he was Spider-Man, fell off and got a concussion. And I broke my arm jumping off the roof with an umbrella. Trying to be Mary Poppins. Mary Poppins. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I was always a butch child. <laughs> oh, okay. So, did, did you know early that you were gay? When did yeah, you come out? Much. In high school? Yeah, I came out when I was about 16. Okay. To my, to my mum, anyway, yeah. Yeah, were you out at school? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> it was hard not to realise. <laughs> yeah, and so did you get a hard time at school? Um, not really. I went to school in Carlton, so it was fairly, you know, it was, you know, fairly progressive kind of school and, yeah, yeah. not really... Didn't get hassled much. that whole sort of rebellion class clown thing happen around the same time? Yeah, about the same time, yes. Yeah. Yeah, flirting so, with my teachers. <laughs> so, but your comedy, uh, I guess, maybe is a bit of a defence mechanism against that because I know that some people do that, like, you know, if someone's going to pick on you, if you make a joke about it, yeah. it sort of um, makes you feel better. Did you, is that... Do you still use that in your comedy? Do you still yeah. talk about your sexuality? Yeah, I talk about a it a lot. Like it's, it's. I mean, it's kind of you know, it's basically who I am, and it's hard for me to disguise. You know, it wouldn't be easy for me to stay in the closet on stage because mm. you know there's the arms and uh, <laughs> <laughs> all that malarkey. But also, it's just it's kind of fun. Like I like the whole because I work a lot with you know straight audiences. It's mm. you know, and I like the confrontation of it. I also like kind of you know making them feel comfortable with yeah. homosexuality. It's like, because once they're laughing and having a good time and they go, oh, you know, that poor's not so bad. And humour is such a good way to do that. Yeah. Humour is a really good way to reach people. They seem to get a message. Yeah, well, if people are having a good time, if people are being entertained, they learn stuff. Like, it's, it's like why, why kids learn so much from Sesame Street. It's like, oh, we're excited for that. Oh, now I know the alphabet. You know, it's just that thing. Once you're being entertained, you can... Educate, I guess. Mm, now we all know you as a comedian, of course. Yes. Yes, because you're so fabulous. And um, <laughs> but what did you do? Like you haven't always been a comedian. It's a very hard no. way to make a living. Oh no, it's not too bad yeah. now. When yeah. I started, it was you know. Of course, but you have to you do other paid things. Yeah. Oh. I've, done he I've had heaps of ridiculous jobs. Yeah. I used to work. Um, I worked in a sex shop for a while. Ooh. Is, you, know, you know, selling videos and blow up dolls, which is. It's, and which sounds like it's going to be really interesting, but I had almost no anecdotes about it because it was, you know, yes. everyone was quite boring. <laughs> you know, those are people who can't actually get sex, so generally. Oh, <laughs> that's not true. What a broad generalisation about people who go to sex shops. I'm never uh, going to show my face in bliss again. Um, well, that's the regulars anyway. 
There was this, oh, there was one guy once who brought back a blow up doll and said, um, it's got a hole in it. And I said, no, that's kind of the point. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, but oh god, you'd have to blow it up and use it to find out. I know, I just said, look, we're just going to it. Refunds at a sex shop, what a bad idea. Oh, I know. When, and someone once brought back a magazine and said, that, oh, there's not enough sex in this magazine. I mean, did you go to the news agents for your weekly and go, there's not enough gossip? No. <laughs> you paid for it, you're keeping it. See you later. Oh my god. Um, so. Also, you work on you work on radio. You work on yes, Jay. I'm a radio star. <laughs> so on um, Wednesdays. Yes, with Wednesdays Mel. with Charlie Mel. I do like I'm kind of like um, the new age John Michael Hausen. <laughs> I do dreadful celebrity gossip stories. Oh really? Yeah. Have you got any good celebrity gossip? Not really. Not really. Ah, <laughs> oh, no, I want the goss. You can tell me later. That's all right. Oh, Demi Moore's having her um, fourth annual 39th birthday. I can tell you that much. <laughs> it's about as exciting oh, as it gets. 39 forever. Yes. And um, so, what do you, what do you think about with your comedy? Mm. Do you tend to think that you're breaking down stereotypes about gays and lesbians and heterosexuals? Because um, would you would you say you're very stereotypical gay boy? Well, you know, I'm not thin. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of like, you know, I'm bitchy, but I'm, you know, I'm untidy. Uh, I don't know. I guess it's... I, I can come across sometimes, I guess, as a bit stereotypical. Like, on stage, I'm, you know, extremely can. But, you know, I, basically, my, my idea of doing stand-up is that people, you know, have one idea of what it is to be gay, and then they meet someone and they go, oh, OK, well, they're not exactly what I thought they would be. Like, you know, some, some parts are the same, and... Mm. Some parts are different, so that's kind of what I'm hoping to get across, I guess, is mm. that we are all, you know, we do have some stereotypical parts to us, but yeah. then there's also, you know, different bits as well. And, well, tell us, about, speaking about gay mixing the sexuality and comedy, tell mm. us about Queens of Comedy. Queens You've done that particular show a few times now. Yeah, that's a show we did, um, first we did at the ESPY, and then we did it at the Comics Lounge, and it was basically myself, uh, Sue Ann Post, Toby Sullivan, Scott Brennan, we started it. Wes Snelling was, was performing in oh, it as yeah, well. Yeah. He did a, a spot. And we took it to Adelaide uh, for the Feast Festival last year, which was great fun. How'd it, it go so over there? Oh, they, had, they loved it. Yeah? Yeah, Sue Ann's a really, really big star in Adelaide. Like, they, you know, you just put a name on the bill and suddenly, you know, there's <laughs> thousands of people lining up at the front door. But, um, yeah, like we had a ball in Adelaide, but it was, you know, the partying was a bit hard. <laughs> is there a lot of partying in Adelaide? Well, I didn't think there would be because it's, no, I was, I was quite scared. I didn't want to go out in case I got serial killed. But, um, <laughs> it was oh, no. <laughs> and Richard in the barrel. <laughs> oh, no. That's what that's it. <laughs> the thinnest I've ever been. Oh. Uh, but in, the, in like, the gay newspapers, you know when you've got your, your personals columns where yeah. people write in, they've got, like, seven points on how not to get serial killed in the, in the Adelaide newspaper, which is called Blase or something. Oh, my God. I know. Oh, it's, no. It's uh, so, um, the Queens of Comedy, you've done that a few times, and everyone, so was it based around the, the fact of the sexuality, or yeah. did you touch on other subjects? Well, some, some of us didn't even talk about it, like, oh, okay. um, Scott Bernard does a character called Glenn Bush, who, <laughs> who's like a 14-year-old boy, you know, wrestling with his, um, his identity. <laughs> and, yeah, and he very rarely talks about, you know, the whole gay thing. It's, it's sort of like an undercurrent for the character. Yeah. Because he's obsessed with Jamie Jury. But, um, you know, and, and yeah, and we, did, we also did a show during the comedy festival called Backs to the Wall, which was all gay performers. And we had, like, a few people on stage who were, who were gay, but not, that wasn't part of their act at all. Like, oh, okay. that wasn't part of their, it was just, you know, we just had gay performers on, like gay and lesbian performers, and that mm -hmm. was the whole point of it. What sort of an audience do you draw to those? Did those shows draw? Was it a gay crowd, or did I you find that it was? This there were a few gay people there, like you know, who come to see, you know, obviously fans of Sue Ann and stuff. But um, mostly straight people come to comedy, like you know. Fans of Sue Ann's, like you don't have any gay oh, fans. Look, got, you know, come on. Well, I had one, and I had sex with her. So he doesn't come see me anymore. <laughs> um, <laughs> He's over that now, huh? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, he's 20 now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's, um, yeah, we mostly get straight. I think because, you know, gay people want, if they want to see comedy, they'll just go and see a man in a dress. For yeah, free. well, but that's another point. Why Why don't you perform at gay clubs? It's a very, we were I talking before occasionally. about gay audiences. It's a very... Uh, it's such a fight. Because <laughs> mm. every other poof's funnier than me, or so they think. No. <laughs> <laughs> what do you, but... Did, that's just because they have a, a dress on, you know. Well, they've got some, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, you know, 
The whole the whole drag thing. Like a lot of my friends go, if you want to do jokes, why don't you just do drag? Really, I'm too lazy for the plucking and the and there's all this. Then, I'd have to get rid of that. That's oh, good. Hours, hours of getting rid of that. Oh, oh my lord. Take to you with some hot wax. Oh uh, no, I got waxed. I did a show for um for was it for Fringe Festival? A show called Crimes of Fashion. I was playing Donatella Versace. Oh no. Oh, uh, and I had to get like the full wax. It's so painful. It's like science fiction pain. I would never want to go through that again. Oh, no. Oh, no, how, do you, how do you do like the pro oh, oh no it's I wouldn't sensitive. do that it's <laughs> sensitive, isn't it? I, I don't know, understand how people bad. do the whole back suck and crack wax it's just like, and especially the stretchiness of the no I don't want to go there <laughs> oh no oh my goodness sorry I'm, I'm <laughs> I know but um, with the with the gay crowd thing though mm. and the the drag queens and stuff the, but then and, and you know if you want to tell jokes why don't you just become a drag queen but then that leads into the stereotype that if you want to if you want yeah. to crack a joke in a gay club why do you have to dress up in a in a dress oh because you won't get paid otherwise <laughs> <laughs> i know but what why isn't there an avenue that's well, always fascinated like, me I, because i i love the drag shows mm. but maybe i'd like to see a drag show and a comedian and a you know and and you something else all on the yeah instead of just you know four men in dresses miming to dana russell but you know, and the other thing is like for for one of the shows we did for the comedy festival, I booked um, Tabitha Turlington to do a spot because I've always thought Tabitha would be great in front Tabitha. of Tabitha. <laughs> and they absolutely loved her. Like you've never seen a group of people so completely losing their mind over Tabitha. I know. Harassing, harassing poor boys on stage. She's she's a bit like that. She tends <laughs> to make you lose your mind. <laughs> she's hysterical. Oh, I know. Okay, well we'll be back with Adam Richards after the. Welcome back to Face to Face on Bent TV Channel 31 and I'm talking tonight with Adam Richard. Hello Adam. Hey, how's it going? All right, even though we're both a bit stuffed up on yes, this Monday night. Yes, I know. Try not Clear to sneeze out. on each other. <laughs> Sorry about that from before. Yeah, I know, that's all right. I'll send you the bill for the dry cleaning. Okay. <laughs> um, we're getting a bit more in depth. We want to know more about Adam Richard. Oh, right. uh, not, just, <laughs> not just the comedy. We were talking about school before. Yeah. And, um, and you know, being very camp in high school. Yes. Tell me about your first love. My first love? Oh, my God. Um, there, I went out with this guy for a while. He was, uh, he was 17 and I was 19. It was all, you know, heady days of romance. Although he lived in Frankston, so I saw him, you know, once a month. And, um, but yeah, he was, you know, he was lovely. I don't remember much of it. I think I was on a lot of drugs at the time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, first, first flush of romance. I don't fall in love very easily. No? Yeah. yeah, but is that the is that the catty thing coming out? No, I think it's just, you know, me being fussy. <laughs> fussy? <laughs> you know, there's a there's What's a What's your hysteria. criteria? Oh, I've got a lot of, you know, criteria. <laughs> I make people feel like a questionnaire. What, what, what is that? You know, let's do a personal ad then. <laughs> Come on, if you want Adam Richard, <laughs> what do you have to do? I am single at the moment. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's, um, I don't know, see, that's one of those stereotypes that people have about, you know, being gay and that, you yeah. know, we'll pretty much have sex with anyone, anytime, anywhere. And, yeah, and I'm a bit more, yeah, fussy. That's strange, yeah, and then that stereotype that lesbians don't. Yes. But, you know, who understands that one? Oh, who knows. <laughs> um, in your gigs, uh, mm. tell us about, tell us about some of your gigs, um, the queens of comedy mm. and stuff. Did anything? What was that like? Any embarrassing moments? Oh, uh, there's always there's <laughs> there's always like people, especially like when you when I'm doing gigs like you know in the western suburbs of Sydney or oh, no. you know way out in the boonies or what have you. You always get kind of you know someone that thinks they're you know a bit all that and is going to kind of take me on. But once a you know a six foot one hundred kilogram homosexual threatens to make you their bitch, generally people tend to shut up. <laughs> So um, yeah. <laughs> so you don't. So you don't have much of a problem with hecklers. No, no, no. I once I once physically assaulted a heckler. <laughs> in oh my god. I know. It was quite bad. Oh, he just he was quite drunk and being and there was no security in the room, so it was um, and he climbed up on his chair, so I pushed him on the floor, and I thought he was just going to come at me and it was going to be all on. He just lying on the floor going, "You'll be hearing from my lawyer." 
<laughs> was he? Oh, no, there's another gay story. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> I'm hearing from my lawyer. I don't think he was even in the RICV, frankly. I don't know if he had a lawyer. Oh, my God. So would that classify as a horror story? Not really. Or just that, no? <laughs> what about horror stories? I don't really have any horror it, stories. No. no. You've never had anyone throw anything at you or anything? No. No? I think it's just that thing. It's just... I think people are really scared of, you know... Having to go home and tell their mates, oh, I got beaten up by a poof dog. <laughs> <laughs> so um, they just don't want to risk it, frankly. Not that I'm a shit ass fighter. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> But no. But you, you, you know. I just look scary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of me. But what, what have been your favourite gigs? You, you've done stuff for uh, the Comedy Channel, yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, the Melbourne Comedy Festival? Yeah. My fa- I like. My favourite TV gig would have to be, um, well, this one obviously, <laughs> The Glass House on the ABC on Friday nights, which is a yeah. great fun show to do. Like, Are you doing that at the moment? Uh, I'm doing it in a couple of weeks, I think. But um, that's a really good fun show to do. Uh, also because they're friends and it's just, it's a really kind of fun atmosphere. It's like, it's not sort of pressure at all. Um, my favourite, the show I just did for the Fringe Festival, which is mm. called Made for Television, which is about made for TV movies, which I love. Oh. And Mad for Daytime TV. That was... I've got a friend who likes all of those too. And oh. all the soapy stars tend to get work in the made uh, for TV well, movies. They do them themselves. Like, the, I don't know what's the Deirdre Hall story. Deirdre Hall, who plays Malena on Days of Our Lives. She made her own made for TV movie of her life. It was so boring. She made it herself. Yeah, she made it herself. Of course, it's going to be boring because she's not going to put any of the good stuff in if she's making it herself. Oh my god! So, and what's what's been your favourite? My favourite. Do you like working on stage? Do you like doing TV? Things like documentary. Oh, the oh the Comedy Channel thing that I did. Yeah, that was was a nightmare. No, that was um that was fun, but that was in Edinburgh and in Scotland, which was you know had to go and live in the city with two other comedians who I'd never met before and. We were kind of chucked into this house and it became a bit of a, um, an issue. Three comedians in the one house. Oh, my God. And Too they, many and cooks. And they thought I was going to be... <laughs> I think they thought I was going to be the, the one that cleaned everything up because it's like, oh, we're getting a, we're getting a puff. It's going to be great. It'll be tidy. I'm such a slob. Oh, no. So they're all, like, cleaning That's up That's a myth. Me. I've had many gay boy flatmates <laughs> who are absolute pigs. That's such so, a myth. They think we're anal, but that's not in the rest of our lives. <laughs> so, yes, it's... Um, yeah, no, that was fun. That was that was a good fun thing. But that was like that was ninety eight. That was years ago. Mm-hmm. Back, back in the old days. So you prefer doing stand up? I love doing stand up. I really, I really like that whole thing of like it's like the thing of live theatre when you go and see something live. Immediate reaction. Yeah, there's an immediate reaction, and also you know it's not the same every night. Like you can go like especially with my shows, like you come to one night and it's you know I'll be doing something completely different the next night, so you could see it four nights in a row and get four completely different shows, I guess. You know, essentially the same show, but with just lots of, you know, different bits in it. And it's, for the people that are there, they, they get to say, oh, I was there the night that, you know, this happened, or I was there the night that that happened, and it's it's not like anyone else can see it. It's not like they've got a videotape of it saying, oh, did you watch this on TV last Thursday? And everyone could have seen it. It's just that one yeah. group of people who've had that one experience. And I really like kind of live stage work because of that. Mm, excellent. And um, one thing I wanted to ask you too, mm-hmm. um, was uh, no, I've forgotten. I've got some tricky questions though. Quick oh no! Questions. What's your favourite chocolate bar? Snickers. Snickers. Satisfying. Oh. <laughs> What's your favourite movie? Probably either Silence of the Lambs or Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> okay. <I know. laughs> Singing cartoons or people getting eaten. I know. I'm very collected with my movie taste yeah. like that too. What's your favourite joke? My favourite joke. Uh, I've got, <laughs> it's a joke about um, these two old women who are driving and uh, one of them picks the other one up and, and they're driving along and, and Ethel goes through a red light and Betty goes, oh God, I should say something but you know, oh, you know, she's giving me a lift to the shops and she goes through another red light and she's like, oh God, I've really got to say something to her, this is getting really embarrassing and then Ethel goes through one more red light she goes, look, I'm really sorry Ethel but you've been through three red lights now and she goes, oh, am I driving? <laughs> <laughs> That's my favourite show. <laughs> That's a pretty good one. Um, you, so you said that you're a bit campy in school. Did you yeah. go in all the school plays and school music? Oh and yeah. Stuff? Yeah. Did you ever get a lead or something? Oh no, I was always comic relief. <laughs> I was. I had to play the, the father in Bye Bye Birdie, and, oh. and 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 I thought, you know, I thought, oh cool, I'm getting to play someone, you know, quite masculine. And then they showed me the video, and in the film it's played by Paul Lind, who used to be Uncle Arthur. Oh, no! Samantha! 
Yes. I wonder why that shows me. <laughs> so, yes. I, yeah, I used to always be in the school plays. I loved all that stuff. Yeah, musicals and stuff. Yes, I can't sing. You can't sing? Mm. No, can't Neither sing can I. They always make you in high school. Yeah. <laughs> it's embarrassing. So, um, the TV work, to, mm. I want you to name drop quickly because I, come on, oh, who, wow. who's been the most fun to work with? Have you worked with anyone who's really terrible? No one watches this, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. I, everyone's been great. Like, everyone I've ever worked with has been, you know, great fun. And He's like, give us the dirt. <laughs> You know, what can I say? But I haven't worked with anyone really awful. If I had, I'd tell you. Don't worry. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, I'd be the first one. What about favourites? Who favorites. do you like working with? I love working with uh, Will Anderson. He's just adorable and good fun. I just wanted you to say the name. <laughs> <laughs> I love Will. He's I love great. Will and, um, and Corinne Grant is so yeah. the sweetest girl on two legs. She's so much fun. I saw her on the tram the other day. See? Yeah. See, she just gets on the tram. She's just like you and me. I know. Well, and then She's I'm a like, normal person. What, what's she doing on the tram? She's probably... I don't know. Her car probably didn't start. <laughs> <laughs> She's got this old shitbox Camaro. It won't go anywhere. <laughs> uh, so, and briefly talking about your sexuality, mm. how did, what about coming out? Did you, did you, you, you said you were camp and it didn't take mm. much for people to know. So did you actually come out or is it one of those metamorphosis coming um. out that sort of just happened? Uh, it was kind of like, yeah, I mean, when I started doing stand-up, and because I was talking about being gay on stage, I thought I should tell, you know, like, my whole family. So I kind of got them all to sort of, you know, sit down, and, and it, was very, it was very much a case of, you know, look, uh, I know some of you probably guessed this already, but um, I just have to tell you for sure that uh, I am a stand-up comedian. <laughs> and um, everyone took it really well. Nan was a bit upset, though, because she wanted me to become a hairdresser. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But do, do you know? Do you have? I have this thing that why do puffs become hairdressers? I've never understood I don't this know. at all. And I you should never trust a hairdresser who's bald either. <laughs> that always freaks me out. I, go, I, always, I always think maybe they bail at the last minute when they're coming out. They're going, Mum, Dad, I'm home. I'm a, I'm a hairdresser. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, now I've got to get an apprenticeship. <laughs> it's just yes, but yeah, I, my no, my coming out was just sort of you know. It was like there was so like everyone there was took it well in the family in and stuff? Yeah, everyone was fine. Yeah, yeah. it's always hardest telling your grandparents, I think. Uh, Even harder than your parents. Yeah. Because oh, you sort of go, oh, yeah, my My nan is so camp. <laughs> She's the campest thing on two legs. So, oh, that yeah. helps. Yeah, we said, we have phone calls for hours about what's happening on Bold and the Beautiful. <laughs> so, yes. Nan, but nan was, you know, she was like, why? My idol as a child. Oh, my man, just like that. Oh, well, if we ever need any advice on gossip and stuff. Oh, yeah. Yes, we'll let you know. But uh, still doing Triple J's on Wednesdays. On Wednesdays, yeah. Charlie and Mel. Yes. And everyone, yeah, loves Triple J. I love Triple J. I don't think I'm supposed to say that. But um, oh, we all love Joy FM as well. Joy yes. Melbourne, it's a lovely radio station. And then TV, Channel 31. Yes, we love all of this. Yes. <laughs> But um, thank you very much for coming in and oh, talking to us so today. And, yeah, keep your eyes out and keep your ears peeled for Adam Richard at Comedy Festival. Well, you can get on my website. <gasps> website, what is it? AdamRichard.com. That's easy, AdamRichard.com. Yeah, it's got all my gigs listed on there. Oh, check it out and see him around the traps sometime. That's all for Face to Face. Bye.